Good afternoon and welcome to a, another episode of Painting the Scriptures on True Word Television. Today we are going to talk about freedom and what does freedom mean today? So we're going to start by actually looking at a scripture in James. James chapter 1 verses 13 to mm, probably 25. So I'm just going to read them here. Whenever you are tempted to say, don't ever say God is tempting me, for God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and he is never the source of temptation. Instead, it is a person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into darkness. Evil desires give birth to evil actions, and when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. So my friends, don't be fooled by your own desires. Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from heaven with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. God was delighted to give us birth by the truth of his infallible word, so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favorite ones in all of his creation. My dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak, and be slow to become angry. For human anger is never a legitimate tool to promote God's righteous purpose. So this is why we abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. Instead, with a sensitive spirit, we absorb God's word, which has been implanted with our nature, for the word of life has power to continually deliver us. Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it, for it was the essence, for that is the essence of self-deception. So let this word become like his poetry, written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover of the reflection of his own face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into perfecting the law of liberty are fascinated and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. So God's blessing in all that we do when we live in perfect freedom, God's liberty and freedom. So today when we paint, we're gonna be painting a bird. I always imagine a bird as having the ultimate freedom, the freedom to fly and soar, and yet they can land on the ground and walk around. And I know as human beings, we belong to fly. We've built planes, we design suits that a person can rocket themselves around in the air. So there's something inside of us that longs to have that same freedom that a bird has. So we're going to explore this topic as we paint a little bit. And we're just going to use the watercolor paper that I've been using, the, the Stonehenge, the 300 weight pound paper. and. We're going to actually be painting a rose-colored finch. Now, why you say a rose-colored finch? I've never heard of such a thing. Well, that's because they're not common in North America. They're actually found in Europe and China and other areas like that. But they're not common over here. But they are common over there. So their natural habitat is someplace else. And sometimes we might feel like we're in the wrong habitat, that we're in the wrong place in life. We might feel like we're a finch that should be rose-colored, and instead we're just gray like a Canadian finch. Now, God designed each one of us for a purpose, for an origin. We're all unique. We all have our place. So I'm just putting some water on the finch. I'm gonna start with him and do the uh, little bit of work on the feathers and the coloring in his body before we go into the backwash. 
We want to have the finch all nicely colored and ready to go before we tackle anything else. And I love that he's rose colored. Now if you can imagine the beauty that God thought of when he thought of making a bird rosy colored. Now can you imagine that? There's many beautiful birds out there. Many different exotic birds. But a finch is just an ordinary bird. There's nothing special about them. They don't do anything overly special. They're just a common bird. Just like a robin is a common bird here in this country. And yet we enjoy when the robins come back in the springtime. We enjoy watching them. Listening to them sing. Something so beautiful about when the birds sing. I love sitting out on my patio in the morning and listening to them at the beginning of the day as they're singing away. So we're just going to let that coloring dry a little bit before we go back in. So now we've got some rosy color on there. We're going to put a little gray in where his legs are here on the tree. So now, freedom. What do we want to talk about when it comes to freedom? I think we all long to experience freedom. We all long to have that ability to soar like the birds. Some of us have had dreams and hopes. Some of us imagine what it would be like to soar through the trees. And yet, we weren't born with wings. So we find today that the comic books and the movies have superheroes with superpowers. Is we want to be like that. We want to have that freedom. We want to imagine that we can be so much more than we were created to be. And yet, if we live the life that we were created to live, what does that actually look like? To look in a mirror and see ourselves the way God intended us to see ourselves. I think the biggest challenge for most of us is that we look in the mirror and we see what the world tells us about ourselves. And maybe it's our parents, maybe it's our friends, Maybe it's other people out there in the world that give us messages that don't actually line up with who God says we are. And when we walk that path, when we believe what other people tell us, we don't actually know who we are and who God called us to be. So how do we find that truth? Well, one of the ways to find that truth is to actually be in the Word of God. So that His Word becomes a mirror on our face. Who God is becomes what we reflect. Now, you might stop me and say, but the Bible's full of rules. The Bible's full of do's and don'ts. That's, at least that's what I was taught. So I'll ask you a question in, a, in response to that. A bird can fly and a bird has perfect freedom, but a bird still has to gather food, build a nest, raise its young, a bird still has a type of responsibility that comes from being a bird. So while they have the freedom to fly, 
and they can fly and be out there soaring around. They still have a natural order to the universe that they have to live out. You see, freedom is freedom to live in the natural order of things, the way God designed them to be. Now, living in the natural order would mean that we're not living afraid, we're not living in fear, we're living the way God intended creation to be. The lion and the lamb lying down together. Perfect freedom in creation. And that's something that we don't really see in our world. We don't see a lion and a lamb lying down together. We don't see God's creation being this perfect thing because the world has taken over and sin has taken over and right now sin is actually in charge in the world but God triumphs over sin and when we look to God and we look for his direction and his word, he's actually in control of everything. But what it comes down to is free choice. God never forced anyone to do anything that wasn't of free will. Because what God desires the most in this world is a relationship. He desires for relationship with us. And so, because that's what God hungers for the most, is relationship. And He wants to know who we are and walk with us. We get the privilege of being part of his natural creation, the natural order of his universe, when we walk as his children, when we know who we are in Christ. It is not a mystery. And we can walk away from God's word and forget who we are in an instant. We can forget who God called us to be. But if we go back to the Word, and we go back to God's Word over and over, we begin to know who we are more and more. And that Word gets stronger, like a deep root that goes down. And it begins to choke out the weeds that it can be in our life. And when the weeds get choked out and we begin to live in the victory and the calling and the freedom that he has called us to, when we truly know who we are, amazing things can, can begin to happen in our lives. God is a God of big destinies. God is a God of big dreams. And there's a season. Life is full of seasons. There's springtime seasons, there's fall seasons, and summer and winter. And we could look at COVID being a season when winter came down in a lot of people's lives. And we began to experience a season of winter. But every time there's a season of winter, God comes back with springtime. And I believe we're in a season of new and spring. And God is doing some new things. But if we aren't walking and looking in the mirror of the scripture and knowing who we are, we might actually miss what God is saying to us in this season. We might actually miss what God is calling us to. 
we might miss the things that he wants to plant in our hearts. Because he may want to take us to a new place, to experience new things. Things that we never ever dreamed of. And I don't know about you, is this resonating with anybody? I believe I've been in a series of springtime that God has been speaking and calling out for some new things that he's doing. And we may not know exactly what that is or exactly what that looks like, but the way to find out is to actually step into it a little bit. Spend some time in God's Word. Spend some time with Him, talking to Him, asking Him what He's doing. What is this season all about? Because the last thing we want to do is miss the opportunity for springtime. Because when you miss the opportunity of spring, you won't have the fall and the harvest. You'll have missed that completely. One follows the other. So if you're not planting, if you're not following the springtime rules right now, and you're just going, well, I'll just wait and see what happens. Well, then you might wait too long and you won't be able to do any sowing. And then summer comes and you don't have what you need. You don't have the things in the proper place. So like a bird, if you're not gathering in the proper season, if you're not paying attention to things in the right order of things, you might be missing out. You might be missing out on where things should be right at this moment in time. Now, It can be confusing. That is certain. There's so many voices now. We have so many things on social media. We get bombarded with so many things. So many people talk about so many things. And that's why it's so important to go to God and see what God is saying in your springtime. And you may not be used to listening to God. You might not be even be used to hearing from Him. But everybody can start. And it just starts by sometimes opening God's Word, just like I did today, and reading a passage of Scripture and seeing what God has to say in that passage of scripture and then asking him questions and then wait for him to answer because believe it or not God always will God wants to speak to us and he wants to give us his direction and his insight so that we can fly and be the creation that he intended us to be. God is a God of mysteries, but he's also a God of relationship. He's the God of creation. He's the God that designed our universe. And he created all the colors, all the birds and the creatures. He created all of creation for our enjoyment. Our God.
God is amazing. And I can't do justice to painting his creation at any given time. There's just something so beautiful about the things that he's created. The details that he puts into every single thing. And if you put that much detail into a bird, how much more detail has he put into you for your purpose and your calling? I don't know if you caught it when I read the scripture in James. We are his greatest creation. Not a bird. Not a majestic lion. We are. We are the very best that God created. And you might not be feeling like you're the very best. You might feel like you're the least of all things. just kind of making this a little bit hazy around the trees. I'm not trying to be defined as I paint the trees. I want them to just kind of be part of the background. Just to be there. But to be it to make this painting about the bird, the beautiful finch sitting in the tree. One of God's majestic creations. All right, I think he's dry enough now. I can put a little more detail into his wings. So I'm going to go in with a fine brush. And we're going to do some detail feathering. So what detail is God putting into your life? What details is God saying about who you are? God has amazing detail. He never ever skips the details. So God has details about you that you might not even have discovered. And unless you step into the springtime that God has for you, you may miss the very truth. You may not see everything that he's calling you to be. So there's a time to sit and rest and prepare and now we're in a time to begin to move and to act. Springtime is a time to act. We have to plant seed in order to have a harvest. We have to plant seed and tend it and watch it grow. in order to have a big crop at the end of summer. Now, we need to hear from the Father. And I guess in this instance, I'm really talking to those people that have a relationship with their Heavenly Father and they know who he is. If you don't know who your Heavenly Father is, if you don't have that relationship with him, he wants to know who you are. He wants to have relationship with each one of us. 
God of creation who created us loves us so much and he came to have that relationship with us he came so that now when I say came I'm talking about he sent his son Jesus to come down to be able to identify and relate to all that we go through so that he can say I experienced that too I know what it is to experience shame I know what it is to be rejected I know what it is to walk alone even my disciples deserted me in the garden and they had been my faithful companions for a long time day after day and yet when it came to the time that he was being arrested charged as a traitor hung on a cross all of those things he was alone even in the end his father had to forsake him his father in heaven could not go to the depths of hell he had to go there alone but he went there for us. He went there to say, I want to give you freedom. I want you to experience life. I want you to know abundant life. That everything that you go through, I have gone through. Everything that you've experienced, I've experienced. I know your shame. I know your brokenness. I know who you are. And I love you with an unfailing love that will never, ever change. So I am the God who came to set you free. So what does that freedom really mean? It means that we're free to live, to be all that God created us to be, to be able to fly and soar in this life, to live and to experience a life that is far more than just a life that is partly partly lived to get up in the morning and just exist is not enough we were created for so much more and you might say well I need to Toil. I need to put food on my table to feed my family, to feed my children, have responsibilities. And that's all true as well. We were all created to have responsibilities. But are we walking through them in the way that He truly called us to walk and live? Are we experiencing a life that is more fulfilling. Are we flying? Do we actually enjoy when we get up in the morning to go feed our family? Do we actually enjoy 
and experience more abundant life? Do we experience the blessings? The last thing I referenced in that verse was the blessings of God. When we walk down the road that He's called us to walk, we actually walk with His blessings. We walk with so much more. We are not left alone. We are not forgotten about. We actually have more blessings. And what does that look like? Well, maybe it looks like writing. Maybe it looks like painting. Maybe it looks like singing. Maybe it looks like business. Maybe it looks like a new invention. God created us to create. He's a creative God and He gave us the exact same ability to create. He gave us the exact same power to create because we are created in the image of God. And the things that God can do to create, that's why we live in this amazing world full of creations that people have created. Because God gave us that ability each and every one of us. He gave us so much. But are we living it? Are we walking it out? Or do we just show up? Put in our time, pay our bills. Are we actually experiencing what it means to live in freedom. I pray that you do. Today I pray that special prayer that you know what it means to live in freedom. That you know what it means to walk with Him. That you know what it means to experience the joy of God in your life, the ability to live more abundantly, more supernaturally. Because that's what God wants for each one of us. He wants us all to understand what He has put inside of our hearts. put inside of our minds our God the God of creation the God that created these amazing creatures in the universe colorful and beautiful created you to be colorful and beautiful Because we are created in His likeness. So I think I just want to go back for a moment. Because we're called as Christians to live in freedom. And I want to read verse 24 again. But I want to ask it as a question. Do you perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word? Do you know how God sees you? And do you see yourself that way? Or do you look in His Word and immediately forget who He's called you to be? 
But when we gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty and are fascinated and respond to the truth, then we're strengthened by that truth and we will experience God's blessing in all that we do. As we walk each day, if we go to God's word, if we believe God's word, and we live out that truth day by day, then we will experience a blessing that we may never have experienced before. And we will be beginning to live like a rose-colored finch instead of living with rose-colored glasses and trying to make our world fit something else. We can take off the rose-colored glasses and see true rose colors. True color, true life that comes from walking with Jesus and knowing who he is as a friend, as creator, as Jehovah God from the beginning. All the things that he did to have a relationship with us, to show us what true liberty was, that all comes from our Father. It all comes from his heart for us. God was delighted to give us birth so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us. And that we would become the favorite ones of all of his creation. I pray today that you become one of his favorite ones. And that as we wrap up this episode of Painting the Scripture on True Word Television today, that you would come to that understanding. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know. Send me a message on, as you watch the show. I look forward to seeing you again on Painting the Scripture with True Word Television. are watching the true word television spreading the true word of salvation You are watching the True Word Television, spreading the true word of salvation.